Man, what's going on, Facebook? I just want to hop on here, hoping that you guys have a blessed day, hoping that you guys understand that you have the ability to conquer today, man, and I'm going to get into why you have that ability. Uh, this past yesterday night, man, Bible study was fire. We're going over the book of John chapter one, man, and that chapter is nothing but poetry, but we really have to understand that chapter you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Goes on to say the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, but yet we did not recognize. And we really have to comprehend all that. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to spiritual taco Tuesday. I'm going to jump into that chapter because like I said, that is nothing but poetry, man. But I want to get into it on John 1, 12, because on John 1, 12, it said that God gave everyone the ability to be his children for all those who believe in him. For all those that believe on him, that you are now children of the Most High. You are now children of God. And we really have to understand the authority that comes with that. We have to understand what God gave us right there. God gave us an inheritance of his kingdom. You are now an heir to the most high, the one that's on the throne, he gave you that ability. And, and, and we have to understand, we truly do. You know, one of my brothers was asking for prayer over his family and he always asks for prayer over his family. And I'm, 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 I'm telling you guys right now, we need to keep praying for our loved ones. We need to keep praying for the ones that are lost in this world. We need to be praying for the ones that are still in the darkness, that they may see the light, that that light may come to them and dwell in them. But last night, one of the other brothers told him, have you ever declared victory over your family? Because we were talking about that verse. He said, have you ever declared victory over them? Have you ever declared that God will impact their life, that they will come to God wholeheartedly because you are now an heir. You now have authority. God placed something in you and gave you something that we don't comprehend at times. And it's so crazy because we started talking about the prodigal son. We started talking about the prodigal son and, and you know, we all know the story of the prodigal son. You know, he told his dad that, hey, dad, you know, you're better off dead to me. You know, I, I'm better off without you, dad. So give me my inheritance. Give me what is going to be mine eventually. Give it to me now and I'll go on my way because I know what's best. And, and I love the fact of this story, but a lot of us don't comprehend the power of that the story has, the power that's behind the message of the prodigal son. They just think that it's about the backslider, but there is much, much more to that because that son takes off. That son wastes his inheritance. That son tries to find a job, just, just feeding the pigs. He finds a job, any job would do, just feeding the pigs, but yet he comes to his senses. He says, man, this job is terrible. Look at me. If I was just had a job with my dad, if I just had a job with my dad, I would be doing much better. Right now, my dad's servants have a hot meal. My dad's servants have a warm household. My dad's servants have clean clothes on their back. So if I just had a job with my dad, I would be much better. And I think a lot of us come with that comprehension to God. And I'm not taking nothing away from servanthood. We are all called to serve. That's not what I'm getting at. But some of us think that that's all we are as servants. 
See, we know the story when the prodigal son comes back, the dad comes out. You know, the dad must have been there every single day because the dad saw his son from afar. He recognized his son from afar. This, I, I don't even believe the son recognized his dad, but the dad knew he would be coming one day. So I bet you he checked every morning and waited there, knowing that the son would come back. And as soon as he saw his son, he went running. There was no doubt in his mind that that was his son coming back home. And, and I could picture this kid, this boy, uh, uh, this son. He was he was like thinking like, is that my dad? As he's looking from afar. And, and he's prepared to tell his dad, look, dad. I want a job. I want to work for you, dad. I was wrong. I tried to work for other people. It didn't work, but I want to come back and work for you. And a lot of us come with that comprehension. I'm going to let you know where I know for a fact that a lot of us got that comprehension. But as soon as the dad met up with them, he hugged them. He embraced them. He clothed them. He put a ring on his finger. He told his workers to go get the fattest calf because today we are throwing a feast. The son didn't know what to do. Matter of fact, the son had his own plan in mind. And he's like, wait, hold on. This, this is a little bit better. Let's see where this goes. So the son's probably in there enjoying the party, feeling good. He's now in a warm home again, has clean clothes on his back, has food to eat. But the other son, the other son was outside throwing a hissy fit, talking about, man, look what, look what my dad does for this son. Man, the, he, he goes and he feasts for him, clothes This son just walked out on him. Let, look what my dad does. I think my dad loves him more. My dad would have never did this for me. I, I'm telling you, the son was just looking with envy. And the dad knew something was wrong, so he took to his son. And he's like, son, what is it? And I could picture the son, the other son saying, dad, I worked hard for you. I work hard for you day and night. I do all this, all this that you see out here in the farm, all this that you see out here, I do. But yet you never threw me a party. You never invited all my friends to watch the Super Bowl. I work hard every day. I never walked out on you, Dad. And this is how I know sometimes we keep that servant mentality. That that's all we are in the kingdom. Because the son's telling them that I serve you. I serve you every day. And I never get anything from it. That's how I know a lot of us never unlock the power that is unleashed in us. That was inherited by us. We never unleashed it. Because the dad turns to him. And he says, look, you see all this? This has always been yours. It never left you. It never left you. He's saying right there, you've always had this authority. See, this authority was taken away from the son. The son walked away. The prodigal son walked away. So he had the power released from him. He had no power out there in the world. But when he came back to the kingdom, he received it. He embraced it. He's seen it again. He's seen it for what it truly was. But a lot of us live in the kingdom like that other son. We're living with that authority. We're living with that power, but we never release it. Because we don't comprehend. And I think today we need to start declaring victory over our loved ones. Victory over our family members. Victory over the ones that we've been praying for for year after year after year, and we feel that there is no progress. Today is the day that you start declaring victory in the name of Jesus. 
Because prayers do get answered. But sometimes we live in that kingdom where it no nothing happened on our time. So we're going to give up and we're going to stop praying. Never stop praying. When I first started preaching, when I first started teaching, when I first started talking about God because God changed me and I started recognizing the power that he gave me, the authority he gave me, my wife came to me and she's like, you don't know how long I prayed for this. And she's talking about when we were in high school. She's talking about when we had our firstborn. She's talking about when we had our secondborn. She's talking about through the drug addictions. She's talking about through the gang life. She's talking about when we had our thirdborn. She continuously prayed. And I didn't come to God till about 20 years later. But she never gave up. And that's the one thing we have to understand. We never give up. Constantly pray. But then there's a time where you got to declare that you know who your father is. You know what your father is capable, that he can do it. So today I declare he will do it. And eventually, just watch your prayers. Just watch them. So I love y'all Facebook. I hope you have a blessed day. I'm sorry I took so long, man. I try to keep these messages short, but man, I encourage you guys to tune in on Taco Tuesday, Spiritual Taco Tuesday. We're going to go over the book of John 1, chapter 1. I mean, the book of John, chapter 1. We're going to go over that. There's so much in there, so much that we have to... Oh, my goodness. If you guys want to hop on, let me know. I'll send you the link out because we're going to get into it, man. I love y'all.